Disclaimer. Please check your playback settings. Ensure you are listening to this podcast at normal speed. Unless you want us to sound drunk. Then play at half speed. Thank you. Shake! 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 We're never going to get a script done in time for the show, guys! Guys, I'm drawing a blank! Guys! Come on, this should be easier than we're making it. We've got like 42 episodes now under our belt. Oh, God. Has our creative talent dried up? No, wait, no. Dan's right. We got this, guys. Come on. We can come up with a skit. Just gotta put our heads together. I blame Josh. I mean, we've grown way too dependent on him. You know, well, maybe if you guys had a good idea once in a while, I wouldn't have to do all the work. Here's an idea. Maybe we would if he didn't steamroll all our ideas. <coughs> Jackass. <coughs> oh, for fuck's sake, not this again. How about I punch you in your goddamn mouth? How's that for a skit? <laughs> I think it's hilarious. And it'd be a lame punchline, just like all the others. <laughs> what the hell is that? <laughs> Future us's! Past us's! Past us's! Past us's! Hey guys! Uh, we got a script for you! Are you okay, Future Dan? What's with the busted lip there, Future Josh? And that black eye, Future Tom? We don't want to talk about it. Let's just say this script kicked our ass. <coughs> ah! Oh, I take it you can't tell us because of the whole space-time wibbly-wobbly continuity continuum? Yeah, past Tom. Let's say that. Can we ask about the time elevator? Yeah, wouldn't a phone booth be more, I don't know, fitting? Sorry, that's a swell idea. But, you know, copyright and all that. Sucks, I know. So if you're giving this to us now, won't we just give it to our past selves in the future who are come to the past to give it to the future who are in the past in the future? Who really wrote this? This kit only works if you don't overthink it. <clears throat> well, past uses, we gotta go. Episode starts in like 15 minutes. Well, thanks, I guess. Later, Later dudes. dudes! Later, Later dudes. dudes! Oh, that was cliche. Yeah, you can tell Josh wrote it. Dude, harsh. Also, fuck you. Oh, yeah, past Tom, you should really call your mom. You might not get another chance if you get my drift. <laughs> what a dumb. What? What does it mean? What do you mean? What does it mean? Okay, so the skit's done. Do we want to read the script now? Why do it today when we can put it off until tomorrow? Yeah, it makes sense. Mm, that's agree. a good point. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yes. See, told you. This guy's got ideas. You know what? Yeah, let's watch a movie, guys. Rise and shine, campers. Put on your booties, because it's cold outside. It's cold out there every day. That's right, woodchuck chuckers. It's Groundhog's Groundhog Day. Day. It's the Groundhog Day Parade to Punxsutawney. We've got everything here in this here parade. Hey, it's Hoosiers with Gene Hackman. Oh, and uh, Dennis Hopper. In speed. Oh, wow. Now we have Keanu Reeves in... Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Oh, my God. And William Sadler. Die Hard 2. Oh, my God. Bruce Willis. Armageddon. Don't look now. Don't look now. It's Ken Hudson Campbell. To... Groundhog's Day! Parade down the streets of Punxsutawney with Dan, Tom, and Josh every Tuesday at the fire pit as they make their way down to the most timeless holiday of the season, Groundhog's Day! The winter may be long, but hey, they got you, babe. Do -do -do -do. Welcome, bots and listeners. Hang on a second. I got to find that Band-Aid. <laughs> oh, that's better. Hello, bots and listeners, and welcome back to another radical episode of the Fire Pit. I'm Josh, British name Reginald, and we're pandering down the crowd and waving at the kids on our Groundhog's Day parade to Punxsutawney. Whoa, we're already on our third episode. 
Anywho, we need to speed past last week's movie and journey on over to this one. So uh, as per our rules, we've taken an actor or actress from our last film and moved them on to this one. So, uh, yeah, why don't we find out who we're watching and what we're watching? I'm totally going to turn things over to Thompson. Tom? Ah, ah, and an ice pack on my eye. I mean, <clears throat> excellent. Thank you, Reginald. Torpson here, righteous American name Tom. I'm going to stop that accent right now. And Thank last, you. you're welcome. And last week we watched Dennis Hopper go from basketball and booze to bombs and buses opposite Keanu Reeves in 1994's action thriller Speed. But tonight we see Keanu Reeves go from certain death to actual death in 1991's Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey the sequel to 1989's surprise hit Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. One of Keanu Reeves' earlier roles when he was still being typecast as cool surfer bro and hadn't quite uh, been typecast as badass John Wick. But to tell us a little more about the cast and the film, I am going to send things over to the radical Nigel. Thank you, Thompson. Uh, hang on, let me drink this soothing tea. <sighs> Thank you, Thompson. Nigel here, and it is most excellent, and my American name is Dan, and yes, tonight we are watching 1991's Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and as mentioned before, it's the sequel to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. The movie was released on July 19th, 1991. It happens to be my 10th birthday movie back then. The running time was 93 minutes. Its budget was $20 million, and its box office returns were $38 million. So a modest success. Yeah, minus, yeah, minus um, advertising and the hype budget. Yeah, I said modest. Um, it has an IMDb score of 6.3 and a Rotten Tomato score of 57%. Um, so it wasn't quite the runaway hit that uh, Excellent Adventure was. Like I said, the box office returns are a little deceiving because, yeah, like Tom said, you, meant you factored advertising and all that. It was enough, though, to spawn a very short-lived franchise of sorts of Bill and Ted. Uh, there was an animated show, a live-action show, some toys, comics, a couple Nintendo games. But all of them petered out after one season, so... It didn't last, but the film opened up at number two behind a little known surprise hit called Terminator 2 Judgment Day. Might have to check that one out sometime. Never heard of it. Nope. Nope. Complete underground. Yeah, I think that's a, uh, it's that one about the robot cop, right? Yes. Wait. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I tried to come up with an yes and to that, but I couldn't. It's just a robot cop. Who'd watch a film about that? That just seems dumb. I'd rather watch a movie about space aliens and giant bugs. Right. <laughs> Same here. But yeah, that uh, that was actually a very interesting weekend in terms of box office. So thank you for that segue, Dan. No problem. I do what I can. But yeah, Bill and Ted's uh, Bogus Journey opened at number two in the box office, pulling in uh, $10 million its opening weekend, which obviously came second to Terminator 2 Judgment Day on its third weekend, where it pulled in $14 million. But on its second week of release was 101 Dalmatians. The 1991 re-release pulled in $7.8 million. And number four was Boys in the Hood, which uh, was on its second week. And uh, also, interestingly enough, Point Break was on its second week of release as well. So Keanu Reeves had two movies in the top ten. I thought, wow, holy yeah. cow. It's kind, of, thought... it's kind of weird. You don't think of the Bill and Ted era of Keanu Reeves being in the same year as the action movie era of Keanu Reeves, yeah. but th those movies were side by side. That's kind of interesting. There, there, there's some interesting overlap, but other movies that was uh, in theaters at this time, like Silence of the Lambs was in 15th on its 23rd week of release. Thelma and Louise in its ninth week. Backdraft in its ninth week. The Rocketeer in its fifth week. Problem Child 2, City Slickers, Naked Gun, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Holy shit. Yeah. I remember these films. Obviously, we're too young to see them in theaters, but wow. Yeah, I do too. I these do were too. all in theaters at the same time and all released within, with the couple of exceptions, within a few weeks of each other. I am so envious of 10 year old Dan right now. Yeah. Like, 10 year old Dan, th this movie came out around my 10th birthday and it was surrounded by movies that are awesome and that we all love. Oh, yeah. Most of us still love most of these movies to this day. Yeah. And you're like, 
this is a great weekend at the box office. Like, wow. It's an eclectic as hell weekend at the box office, too. It's like you got weird stoner comedy or serial killer cannibal movie. Yeah, or dead presidents robbing banks and surfing. Like, it's, I mean, you got a little bit of everything. Oh, and cute dogs for the kids. And I know uh, Rocketeer, man, that shaped, you know, was that summer 91 for me. Fuck, I was running around with pieces of wood strapped to my back. And it was, if we ever get to this movie, I'll go more into detail. But, you know, solo cups tied as the end of Rockets. But I love that. And I love Bill and Ted's bogus journey, too. This was a weekend. This this was a summer for me. That's for damn sure. A lot of good movies. Yeah. Now, that I didn't go to the movies a lot as a kid in the summer like this. But I remember, like, this is the fall of awesome trips to blockbuster video. You know, it's yes. like, this is great. Yeah. Like this is le- legit walking into the video store. Kids, you, you don't know what those are, but look them up walking into the video store and being like a kid in Christmas. Like, Oh my God. Oh my God. And you know, that, they'll never know that feeling of like seeing that box of Bill and Ted's bogus journey or uh, one of those movies like the rocketeer and then seeing the tape behind it. I'm like, Oh, they got a copy. <laughs> it's like <laughs> They'll never know that joy. Oh God. Yeah. I remember when Twister came out, I so bad wanted to see that movie because it was actually filmed within a few hours of my hometown. But uh, they said, it's like, yeah, we're expecting a copy back in about 45 minutes. And I sat there <laughs> and then my parents like, what are you doing? We need to leave. And I'm like, I want to watch Twister. It's coming back. And they said one, they're expecting one in 45 minutes. My parents rolled their eyes and dragged me kicking and screaming out of our, out of the uh, rental store. Oh no. Denied Josh. Oh, another tragic backstory from Josh. Oh, he is a <laughs> doofenshmirtz. I swear. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I love you. <laughs> Child abuse. Oh, boy. Yeah, but seriously, kids will never understand the sheer joy of getting a movie from the rental store. Like, how exciting that was to be able to watch that. And then the rejection of, we're not getting new releases tonight. Because, you know, normally the video stores, again, kids, look this up. This was the before time. The video store, you had to, usually new releases had a lesser rental time than the general releases. Like new releases had to be back in a day or two. And the general release, you got to keep like three or four days. So, yeah. you know, mom and dad, you know, mom and dad would be like, we're not getting new releases tonight. But, 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 but no. So you go and watch Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure for the fourth time instead of Bogus Journey. So- Which for my dad would have been the better choice. He was, I love Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. We rented that constantly. My dad, not a big fan. Not, not, he thought Bill and Ted's Excellent was much better because the future actually looked cool as opposed to in Bogus Journey, where I guess it looked not cool. So, yeah, see, my mom was the opposite. My mom does not like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, calls the movie stupid. But um, she actually liked Bogus Journey. She thought it was funny. And actually, she really likes the char- the death character in this movie. She thought the guy was, he has all the best lines. That's what, according to her. In fact, I told her tonight on my way home from work, she called me on my way home from work. And she goes, are you doing your podcast tonight? And I was like, yeah. And she goes, what are you watching? I said, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. She goes, I like that one better than the first <laughs> one. <laughs> and I guarantee she hasn't seen either one in 30 years. But she's like, I like that one better than the first one. So that's great. Thank God, I haven't seen this in a while. This I'm a little tepid. Well, actually, no, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself. I apologize because I'm excited to see this. I'm not going to lie. This, this came up on the list like, 10 <gasps> year old me is like, excellent. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, I guess we could try this. We're going to try. We, we added something to the script. So I gave my box office info. So, Dan, do you have any trivia about the movie? I got a little bit. Um, hold on. I had some notes, actually. I, I didn't pull. I forgot to pull them up when we started. But um, I did have some interesting uh, trivia about the movie. One of them is uh, there's a quite a few shout outs in the movie to other sci-fi adventures. And also apparently the games, uh, you, we've all three seen this movie, but the games they play with death are a homage to an old movie called um, The Seventh Seal. In fact, there's a scene where like death is standing or sitting above the chessboard after they've beaten him for like the fourth or fifth time. And he's just standing over it. That's supposed to be like a, a shot from that movie. Mm-hmm. So, uh, anyways, a uh, couple of things uh, in the Battle of the Bands. There's some real bands in the Battle of the Bands uh, that were big at the time. Like Primus is a, the band that plays the opening act right before Bill and Ted's band, The Wild Stallions, play. Playing one of their big hits of the 90s. Another little bit is uh, all the air guitar. Whenever Bill and Ted do something cool, they always air guitar. And you hear it go... Okay, that was all done by Steve Vai. He's a very famous guitarist. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, whatever they got. Excellent. Like, that's him doing it all the time. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I think he also plays guitar for the Wild Stallions. Like, he's the one that actually recorded their guitar parts. But people want to watch the movie along with us. They might recognize 
the classic voice actor, the legend himself, Frank Welker, the voice of Soundwave and Megatron and the old school Transformers. Um, he's also the voice of Dr. Claw from Inspector Gadget. And uh, he does a lot of animal voices, too. So like if you ever watch Futurama Nibbler, he's the voice of Nibbler. But uh, Frank Welker is the voice of Station, the alien scientist thing. Station! That... Yeah. <laughs> nice but uh yeah that's that's all i got i mean i don't want to sound like i'm just rattling off imdb trivia but yeah there's some little it's exactly what he's doing i am reading it word for word um <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so this movie was tended to actually be the interquel unfortunately the sequel to this movie was not made until just recently uh came out and just a few months ago and actually kind of started a little bit of a resurgence for this movie oddly enough it didn't get a widescreen dvd release until the mid aughts like it, when you could only find it on dvd from 2000 in full screen format it was hard, you couldn't find it in widescreen did get a widescreen release on dvd for quite a while huh that's that's actually kind of surprising considering they put everything on dvd i know i know well, they, they did but um but dvd players came out before the widespread use and purchase of big screen tvs so um because if you guys remember back in the day big screens were expensive oh yeah my parents had a rear projection tv and i think that was 50 60 inch that was only full screen though those were expensive Expensive. I remember the first big, big screen TV we had in the house. Mom and dad financed it. Like they paid it off in like six months or something like that. They financed the TV. Now I can just go to Walmart and pay cash for one. You know, it's like you don't even think about that now. But anyways, so DVDs came out when TVs were still like the biggest ones that you could normal people or average people afforded. I don't want to say normal people like I'm some rich asshole. I'm not. Um, average people could afford maybe it was like 19, 20 inches. Uh, so yeah, full screen DVDs were actually more popular in the early days of DVD. Widescreen was not as popular until bigger TVs started to become more affordable. Also, this movie's an unintentional period piece, as the TV trope would say. Uh, there's product placement of Pepsi all over the movie, and it's their old Pepsi can design. Uh, about a month or two after this movie was released, Pepsi released their new logo. <laughs> so all this Pepsi uh, product was in the movie, and then it's, it's their old logo. So. I thought that was kind of funny. But that's all I got for so far. I'll talk about other things as the movie goes on. I don't want to go on forever. Um, but, uh, Tom, why don't you give us a little bit of uh, some behind the scenes technical trivia. You know, what's going on. The actors and the directors and technical, stuff like that. Technical breakdown. Yeah. I well, couldn't think of a good title for that. So yeah, don't improv. feel free to improv it. No, <laughs> don't do that. We're terrible at improv. I'd speak for yourself. I'm brilliant at improv, just as I could. Yes, oh, and you can't poop out of your butt. God damn it. Now I, lo I lost my train of thought. Yeah, so if for anyone that's going into this film blind, never heard of it before, or if you happen to find yourself back in time in the theaters, I don't know if this film would have really endeared you, aside from being a sequel to Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. The director... Peter Hewitt replaced the original um, who read the script and thought it was dumb. Uh, Peter Hewitt. This was his first movie. Um, he would go on to direct such classics as Garfield, The Borrowers, Zoom, and Thunderpants. And as a side, we need to see that film sometime because it's a film about a kid who uses his farts to launch nasa rockets and somehow they got ned Beatty and paul giamani in it so i don't know whether it's an unproven film that no one's seen or just they knew where the bodies were but that's my tangent on that one i am morbidly curious i really <laughs> want to see that movie now yes but <laughs> and uh for future listeners the movie zoom is not about the video conferencing app by the way no i looked that up and it was disappointed but i went off target uh the writers were chris matheson and ed solomon both the original bill and ted writers and who would go on to write the third one uh chris uh wrote a goofy movie and mom and dad saved the world ed wrote men in black and charlie's angels and also Super Mario Brothers. So real strong writing team, those two. Well, that's not exactly fair. According to everything I've read about that movie, 20 people wrote um, Super Mario Brothers and only five of them actually take credit for writing it. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, there was actually a uh, cage match on who would not 
get it and like if you won the cage match you didn't have to get credited on that movie. yeah it was like it was like the royal rumble they got thrown over the top and they're like you know the last four standing didn't have to take credit so they're like fantastic so i guess ed must have been one of those unlucky guys poor fella (laughs) yeah yeah. he was thrown out like the second uh second no he was was thrown out before his entrance music was over like he just got over the ropes and kane just grabbed him and hooked him over it's like oh well never mind then you're on the script you're on it. Damn it. No. <laughs> it's a career over. But yeah. But what wasn't a career ender were for Keanu Reeves, who plays Ted. He was, as we noted earlier, this was a weird transition from unknown, lesser known. Well, he was still decently known, but up and coming Keanu to action star Keanu. We know him as Neo and John Wick now, but you know, back then he was in dangerous liaisons where I guess we, he got to practice his French accent, which um, if it was anything like his British accent in Dracula, I'm sure it was just mm, so good. And the film called Permanent Record, where he played a character who witnesses his best friend commit suicide. So just a happy-go-lucky film. Uh, of course, Alex Winter plays Bill, who uh, he didn't really do much before this. Uh, some Alex Winter did a lot of writing, didn't he? He does. I mean, he does now. He does a lot of documentaries and television stuff. Back then, I mean, his biggest roles were in Death Wish 3 and Lost Boys. But I remember reading that uh, when they was doing the next, uh, the most, the newest movie, it's like he hadn't acted in like 15 years. Mm-hmm. Because he's doing all the behind the camera stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some of them actually look pretty decent. Um, I can't remember one of the more recent documentaries he did. I'd have to look it up again. Um, but look up his IMDb listeners. Uh, he's actually done some interesting stuff. He did not have to take the Bill and Ted 3 movie. He does not need a paycheck. So um, if we ever see Bill and Ted what face the music, at least we can know he's doing it for the fun of it. He doesn't need to be there. Nor did William Sadler need to be in this one. He was the guy that played Grim Reaper. He took it because he got to be funny. He was the guy that was always in bad, serious bad guy roles. And he said, I got a chance to be funny. He was also in a bunch of other films, recognized him. He's actually from... What was it he was in that I saw? The Shawshank Redemption. That's right. He's another carryover from Shawshank Redemption. He played Haywood. So we've gotten, he's, this is our second time seeing him in this one. Also, Joss Ackland. He was the diplomat in Hunt for Red October. So that's another two for from him. He also, some would recognize him from Lethal Weapon 2 as Mr. I Have Diplomatic Immunity. A quality actor. Uh, one of the few people that st- does not have fond memories of this film. He regrets being in this film. Uh, really? Oh, yes, yes. With him, of course, also there's Pam Greer, who plays Miss Wardrow, their manager. And if you don't know who Pam Greer is, go get an education. Jackie Brown, Foxy Brown, Black Mama, White Mama, Escape from L.A. She's been in a lot of good movies. And she's been in a lot of bad movies, but she's always a badass in those movies. So she's one of those uh, actors that features a lot in Quentin Tarantino films. He's one like one of the she's one of the ones that he likes to cast in mm-hmm. either major major roles or bit roles in a lot of his movies. Yes, 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 yes. Clearly, I need an education then. Oh, uh, so anywho, um, yeah. but yes, I'm, I'm continuing on. I know, I know, this is going on a little bit longer. There's some good. I mean, there are at least some good actors and actresses. George Carlin, of course, Rufus coming back. Um, and who doesn't? love you know asshole nihilistic george carlin so these are rufus yeah yes so even if you didn't trust the writers and directors um you can at least trust the actors i mean the orion pictures trusted it all well enough it's funny around this time that this movie was coming out orion pictures was going bankrupt and had to sell their intellectual properties and movies that were coming out this one they didn't because they had that much faith in it So this is a movie that at least had the faith of its uh, distributor that, yes, we got ourselves a gem. And, well, history shows, history shows. But that went on a little bit longer. I'll try to trim those down in the future. With knowing all this and knowing everything else from our past experiences, Josh, what is your current expectations going into this film? I want to coin a new catchphrase. Tom, fix that in post. Yes, please, I will. <laughs> but uh, my expectation, I would have to say, I've recently rewatched all three of these movies. It's, it's one of those situations where Bill and Ted's Face of Music came out, and I'm like, 
this gives me an excuse to go rewatch all of those movies. So I did. And I have to say, I still love the shit out of these movies. <laughs> so I know exactly what I'm getting into tonight. And I got to say, I'm just, I'm excited. I love this movie. It's silly, stupid fun. Um, honestly, I'm noticing that kind of a trend with the exception of Hoosiers. Um, set your brain aside fun for this journey. Because, I mean, we've got uh, last week, you know, speed, set your brain aside you're, and you'll have a good time. This week, definitely set your brain aside. Die Hard 2, definitely set your brain aside. Armageddon, you, it's a yeah. requirement to watch. It's it's a requirement to enjoy that movie. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, no, I love this movie. Um, I love Keanu Reeves. I love, I love everything about this movie. It's just silly, stupid fun. My expectations is, I know... I know what I'm getting into. I really don't have anything beyond that. Um, I'm going to have a good time. I expect to have a good time. But I really wish I didn't have to watch it with you guys. But I have to. So there's that. I just recently listened to a few of our older episodes. And we, we constantly say I look forward to watching these movies with you guys. So I just I just wanted to change that up a little bit. You know, Josh, I'm about to just give you the punchline now. <laughs> Tom, mm-hmm. edit him okay, out. let me rephrase. Let me rephrase. I'm looking forward to watching this with Dan. Tom, eh. So, Tom, what are your expectations about mm. this film? <laughs> Whoa, Josh. Firstly, fuck you. <laughs> Secondly, um, I'm... Uh, I loved this film as a kid, like I said. I thought it was wicked as hell, using some 90s terminology, cool catchphrases. I've been hurt by films <laughs> that I loved as a kid and then went back to with adult eyes. And I'm really concerned that it's going to be a similar situation here, especially like the glimpses of the future. I thought those were badass. My dad thought everything looked stupid. And I remember watching a clip of it. I can't remember where, like a few years back of like that, at that scene of the future. I'm like, oh my God, this is so dumb. It is. It is. Yes. And I didn't see anything else after that. So I'm going back in with adult eyes, cautious. I'm hopeful though. I'm hopeful that modern Tom, present Tom can enjoy it as much as past Tom, or at least find something to enjoy. But uh, there's a pretty good chance I'm going to walk away just cringing on the inside. But, you know, that's what you get for not watching a film for at least, God, this came out in the 90s, um, 20 plus years. I don't know. I can't math. But I think I know someone who can math. Nigel, when was the last time you saw this film yourself? And what are your expectations? I was told there'd be no math in this podcast. Well, you know what, Nigel? I'm sorry. Blame Dan. (laughs) I mean, blame Josh. Again, I get the confused. Take a drink. (laughs) <laughs> wow. Tom's getting the continuity all over the place here. Time travel just messes <laughs> with him. Um, God, I can't remember the last time I saw this movie all the way through. I can't remember the last time I saw it on TV. I've watched Excellent Adventure recently, and I did watch the third one. <clears throat> but, I, God, I haven't seen Bogus Journey in a long time. I mean, a long time. Wow. Uh, but I remember loving this movie, you know, and I, I remember the basic plot points. But one thing I do like about it is like one of the biggest complaints or maybe criticisms of uh, comedy sequels, especially comedy sequels, is that they're um, they just kind of retread the same plot over again and use a lot of the same jokes. And one thing I do like about Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey is it's not the same exact plot as Excellent Adventure. And just recently rewatching Excellent Adventure within the last month or two, I'm looking forward to seeing this. I kind of want to compare the two because Excellent Adventure is still fresh in my mind. So... I kind of want to see this one again and then compare it to the the bookend ones, the Excellent Adventure and Face the Music. I'm not looking forward to watching it with you guys um, because I hate you. Hate you too, man. Yeah, hate you back. Sorry, I thought my microphone was on mute. <laughs> Damn it. No, seriously. I'm just, I'm looking forward to seeing it. Maybe mostly because it's a comedy and um, it's uh, other than our destination film, Groundhog's Day. It's one of the only comedies uh, we had on this board except for armageddon which is an unintentional comedy (laughs) um i think that's all i really got to say i mean i really just i'm just looking forward to watching this movie tonight you know i know we say that a lot probably to the point where it's it might as well be a catchphrase too um but yeah i just i really want to see this comedy i'm really looking forward to watching this movie with you guys you know what i'm looking forward to 
the quiz. Yes. Speaking of retreading, uh, <laughs> so apparently I did not win the quiz again. To yeah. Nobody's surprised. But uh, Nigel, I think uh, you uh, snatched the victory from the jaws of defeat barely last week, if I remember correctly. I remember it not even being close. I I don't know. I remember it being pretty darn close, actually. I mean, eight to two. Yeah, I think you scored the first run, and then I scored eighteen unanswered points. <laughs> it's like no. Well, let's see if I can keep up Tom's losing streak, or if I could be that one guy who loses to Tom. Yes, come on, Josh, be my sports team to my other sports team. I am going to try to not lose to you, but we shall see. Best of luck to me and not to you. So, All right. So it's the usual format. It's IMDB trivia. Um, I decided not to do multiple choice trivia stuff because we added where I talk about movie trivia. So I decided to just go with the usual IMDB trivia. As usual, the uh, scores are 1 through 10. And uh, I'm going to read a couple of lines from the review. And I want you guys to guess whether or not it is a whatever star and uh, an extra point if you get it right on the money so since tom lost so badly last week josh is going first so that we can just spare you the um false hope if you score first that you're going to win that's all right that's all right i mean josh i'll let it's amazing we know (laughs) okay josh here we go i wouldn't dare say this film is better than the original but it is very good in its own right The comedy in this film is just as good as the original. Say 8 out of 10. Oof, oof, this seems like a liar's one. I'm going to say 4 out of 10. Ooh, Josh, that was a 7 out of 10 review. Damn Ah, it. Yes. I was like, it was like, I felt like a 6, but then after the last part, I was like, maybe an 8, so yes. Uh, Anyone, Tom, here we go. Anyone who claims to be the world's smartest scientist ought to know better than to be caught on camera during one of the year's stupidest films bogus plot two three tom right on the money to oh, two star oh do i smell do i smell last week only for tom is he gonna do a dan today find out next week on fire pit all right let's go on to the movie guys <laughs> <laughs> oh i'm okay with that i'm up by one so yeah we can no, no, we'll finish the quiz next week after dan sends me all the answers <laughs> God damn, that would be my luck. All right, well, I don't want that, so ask the next one. All right, Josh. Excellent adventure is intelligent, fun, and hilarious. Bogus journey is none of these things. I'll say four out of ten. Ooh, I think Josh has got this. So I'm going to be a dick and also say four out of ten. They're both wrong. It's one out of ten, so no one gets the point. Damn it. Hey, I'm still up by one, though. Really, right. Tom? <laughs> I honestly thought you yeah, had that that's one. That's a bullshit thing, too, because now you... I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep that thought to myself. No, Use I'm not going to do that all the time. <laughs> I promise. If I'm ahead, I'm just going to pick the next answers and nobody gets any points. <laughs> all right, here's, here's, here's a good one. You guys are going to get this one. The first film had little ambition, so nothing sticks to the screen. It was a bad version of Back to the Future with zero charm. Once it's accepted that Bill and Ted are nitwits, the joke can only be hammered at the audience so long before it breaks. Oh, do I get this one? Okay. Yeah, um, it's, yeah this is you. No, you guys aren't going to get this one. Oh, uh, it's got to be, a, I'm going to say a two. Yeah, I'm going to play it safe and say three. Yeah, I knew it. You guys aren't going to get this one right. This is, a, this is the opening line to a 10-star review. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, the, the next the next paragraph after that talks about how wonderful this sequel is compared to the first one. Apparently, he hated the first one. And then the, the next like lines of the, the review are him talking, just glowing about how great Bogus Journey is. So, Oh, my God. But I, thought- I wanted to guess high. I wanted to guess like an 8 or a 9 just because, based off what you said. But I didn't want to risk it, so I said three, so I would get the point. Nice try, nice try. <laughs> All, right. All right, so Josh, next one is totally like non-bogus movie, dude. Way excellent. Station! Oh, God. <laughs> um, eight star. Repeat it once more for me, Nigel. In conclusion, totally non-bogus movie, dude. Way excellent. Station! Oh, in conclusion, that's what's getting me. You said an eight, Josh, so I'm going to say a seven. 
Josh on the money with an eight star Boom. review. Josh retakes the lead by one. Arrgh. No, I thought that's four for, wait, yeah, we were tied. No, you guys got the last two wrong. No one got points. No, I, he was closer. No, no, but I was closer. Price is right rules. Yeah. And since we had the same question and none of us were on the money, no points. Oh, okay. So you're right. You're right. My so mistake. I was closer. So it's, I'm, I'm ahead by two now. Josh is ahead by two. My mistake. I'm sorry. So I have to get this right on the money. You got to get the next two right on the money to take Josh and hope he doesn't get at least one. Oh, well, yeah. Cause yeah. Cause I always have enough for a tiebreaker. Yeah. So, okay. So you, this is question number five. Okay. Okay. No, no. Yep. 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 Math involved. So unless he gets this on the, uh, unless Tom gets this on the money. We yes. Won't hear. yes we'll yes. hear that, but it won't be. Uh, okay. Yeah. So Tom, this is a tricky fence to balance on, but when you watch the movie, not as a throwaway screwball comedy, but as an adventure featuring two guys who have no business being on an adventure, it becomes so much more. Ooh, this actually does seem like a high one. Oh, I'm, I want to say it's an eight, but I actually think it might be a nine. So I'm going to say nine. You said nine, Tom? Yes. Uh, I want to say six, but I think I'm going to go with an eight. Tom, right on the money oh, with a oh, star oh. review. It actually comes down to oh, the tiebreaker. Oh, yes, yes. Oh, whew, I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Wow. I, uh, I really hope one of you gets this next one right because I don't have a tiebreaker tiebreaker <laughs> question lined up. Well, you can't pick the same thing that somebody else picks. Yeah, Josh. Okay. Reeves and Winters do an excellent job of reprising their roles, but their dim-witted metalhead personalities become over-reliant source for jokes, which become more redundant than funny. Josh, I think you have the first guess here. Yeah. Um, uh, let's go two. Two star. I'm going to say th this is probably a five star, but I'm going to say three. Tom's got trivia next week. It's a five Damn. star. It's a five star review. I knew I should have went five star. <laughs> Damn it. I just really shut him out. Tom, well, no, you want to shut him out because Josh scored points. That's not what a shutout yeah. is. But you won by one point, Tom. Tom, Tom, congratulations for winning trivia. Josh, I'm incredibly disappointed in you. <laughs> I'm incredibly disappointed in me too. I'm gonna go commit ritual seppuku right now after the movie. Oh wait, you don't, you don't edit. Never mind, you can go. Well, I don't have a sword, so I'm just gonna use a Gatorade bottle. Oh, that'll sound slow and painful. Yeah, that that seems ridiculous, Josh. Why would well, you? Um, isn't isn't seppuku that thing where you? I'm at a loss. You know what? I am terrible at improv. Tom, play the music. Welcome back to a most excellent episode of the Fire Pit. I am, as always, your interspersal host, editor, and excellent time traveling troubadour, Tom. And hey, you know that big thing you have coming up? Don't worry about it. Actually, you should probably worry about it a little bit. But thank you for dropping your worries and hopping with us into the old Wayback Machine to the simpler times of 1991 of Bill and Ted's bogus journey, which puts us chronologically just a few years out from the destination of our Groundhog Day March to Punks to Tawny, Groundhog Day. And speaking of time travel, what say we pop in and see how the team's doing on their own time we want me trials? Yeah. Okay, mom, I love you too. I I love you too. No, no, it's okay. No, it's okay. It's, I just wanted to call. I just it's no reason. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Okay, bye, 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 bye. I still don't know why future me wanted me to call her like this, but whew. all right. Well, guys. We've got to record in a few hours, so we should probably read the script now, eh? Yes, and now that we've established a time reference, we can definitely start. Also, Tom, tell your mom I said hi. I don't get what that means, Josh. It's another Back to the but, Future. Wait, didn't we already do it, like, at the beginning of the episode? Read the script, I mean? Shh, 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 shh. Remember what future you said? Don't overthink <laughs> it. <laughs> Tom, if you don't shut up, I'm going to punch you in the face. Dan, calm down. Just give Tom the script. Don't tell me to calm down. I'll punch you too. Tom, here. You've got the first line. Thank you, Nigel. <clears throat> ha ha ha. 
you dumbasses. Did you really think we just give you the script? Josh, you've got the next line here. Well, thank you, Thompson. All right. <clears throat> you haven't figured it out yet, but we didn't write a script for you. No, for fuck's sake. What? What? No, you guys are terrible actors. Look, no, no, give me the goddamn script. You probably thought Dan had figured something out, huh? What idiots. This is an oddly paced script. This is nothing like the opening skit. Who's got the next line? No, 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 that, that's it. That's the whole script. It's terrible. Clearly Josh wrote this. Just three lines? Oh. My. God. They were our evil usses. Why do you say that, Josh? Hey, fuck you, Dan. Clearly Josh wrote this. Future me worked hard on this. I think. Guys, guys, calm down. Look, that was the bad usses. Clearly the future good usses are going to show up in their magical time elevator any second and give us the completed script. Any second now. And they never did. Oh. But on the subject of past and futures, we're fast approaching the future of our mid-season break, wherein we celebrate the past of this podcast. And for that big event, we're going to have a special Q&A episode after this journey. So if you have anything that you want to ask us, or have been curious to know about us, the podcast, how it came about, so on and so forth, shoot us a line on either Discord, Twitter, or our email at curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com. That's Curtain Call Entertainment INC at gmail.com. Just be sure to put Fire Pit in the subject line as well as what you're emailing about, whether it's for the QA episode, a general question, an ad you'd like to pay us to host, or you know, just whatever else you got going on. And then let us know what you have in the email itself. Then we'll read it. Hop into our time machines, send it back to before you even send it, and never bother to respond, because time is an illusion, and responses to emails, doubly so. But that email again is curtaincallentertainmentinc at gmail.com, capital C, capital C, capital E, capital I, at gmail.com. <laughs> Future me? Past me! I came to let you know that you have to get back to the show. Right stat now. Thanks, future me! Well, looks like it's time for me to travel on. A little time travel pun there. But thank you for joining, and as always, good luck. <laughs> And now to check on the team to see how they're enjoying their movie. If you just died, you're about to enter the gates of heaven. What happens? Roll for initiative. I will admit, I'm very disappointed the sequel to this totally uh, retcons the uh, ending. Yeah. I never understood the purpose of the third one, considering they saved the world at the end of this one. My headcanon is that uh, it's an alternate universe. Actually... I'd like to think that somewhere down the line, a year called 2020 happened, and this is what we got. You might be onto something there, Nigel. I'm my old friend, Colonel Oates, from the Alaskan Military School. I don't think that's a real thing. Is that a real thing? Oh, God. Oh. I'm still waiting for these colors to take into effect in the styrofoam. No. When is it going to be acceptable to dress like this? Because, oh, wait, 400 years from now, I'll be long dead. I love those shoes. What's... No. What? What's wrong, future? No. It's like someone looked at Uggs and just said yes. Past Tom said this was awesome, remember? Past Tom was an idiot. So this is the same... That was the same gas station where the plot to the Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure kicks off. That's why there's a another burn mark from the other phone booth from the last movie still there. You know the guy in the circle case is going to be looking out going, this again. To the end. I mean, we're talking about a $25,000 first prize. I've got a two-year record deal. And I've 
had a chance to be seen by the most important people in the business. Thanks for the exposition. Shut up, Bill. Better use a real jerk. Yeah, I gotta remember to be more considerate towards myself when I become him. Maybe if you guys would be a dex, you gotta have a history of being. Never mind. There's too much logic. <laughs> my, I put my brain in for a second. That was a mistake. Yeah, don't do that. That kid was probably our age at the time. Still is our age. Yeah. Had to be surreal for Keanu Reeves, considering he hasn't been a child since about the 1700s. <laughs> Keanu Reeves and Nicolas Cage both fought on the Civil War. I have proof. Such a convincing accent. Those of you who were too young to be there when this movie came out, these effects were considered okay. I like how they're dead and they're still using doors. Their logic is irrefutable. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta love it. You just, you gotta be like, wow, I, okay. That, I mean, I makes sense to you, bud. Whoa, Whoa. Not cool, Keanu. Oh, no, not cool, man, Keanu. we can't, we don't say that word anymore. <laughs> I don't know why, but I love their dialogue. <laughs> because it's awesome. <laughs> it's amazing. It's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Future generations will watch this and think that's how we spoke in the 90s. I can't wait till archaeologists dig up a copy in about 4,000 years. He died. It's Look, it's Apollo Creed. Oh it my was... God, it's right after he was killed. <laughs> Connection. Confirmed, <laughs> Bill and Ted takes place in the same universe as Rocky. Hollywood Eagle. Long run future society be based on the ideas and the music of these two force. Based on my ideas. Okay, Trump. <laughs> Is there their time limit for each band? I'm pretty sure they've exceeded it. They haven't even played a note yet. They actually lost the competition just for disqualification purposes. That's why there's a third one. We we just solved the. Yeah, we, yeah, we just solved the plot hole. You might be a king or a little street sweeper, but sooner or later you tend to be a <laughs> uh, <boo. laughs> Shut up, Tom. Best lines. How does any of this make sense? I love this movie. And now, back to the episode. Alright, so final movie discussions. What are you what is the world's most perfect movie and why is it this one? <laughs> yeah, I still like that movie. Yeah. Yeah, it's it holds. Yeah, it still holds up. No, like I said, I'm going to have to go back through and watch the credits. Because, yeah, I know you guys said there wasn't really anything to see in them, but the small stuff. Oh, no, I'm not saying they weren't creatively done credits. I'm just saying that there, there's no, like, you don't miss anything from the movie if you don't see it. Ah. It's just a nice, if I was part of the crew, they'd be like, oh, these are nice. You know, mm -hmm. like, but there's no, like, you know, Avengers initiative. No, no, there's nothing like that. There's no, like, sequel hooks in it or anything like that. It's just... The way the, the credits are worded, like with saying things like, you know, the most awesome, you know, camera crew. And then like they give all the names and some of the names had nicknames. Evil Bill and Good Bill and all that. Yeah, I caught a bit of that. All right, Thompson, give us uh, the summary, please. Oh, I should, shouldn't I? Yes. All right. So we start the movie in the great far future of the 27th century, where the height of style is styrofoam and gusher packages. Um, standard music class is interrupted by Mr. Diplomatic Immunity himself, Joss Ackland, as did Nominos, who hates the aesthetic so much that he's going to go back in time and mess it all up by saying the evil robot versions of Bill and Ted to kill the real Real Bill and Ted. Meanwhile in the present, real Bill and Ted are getting ready for the Battle of Bands, which is going to get them noticed and bring about world peace. But then evil them take them to the desert and kill them on the rock where Captain Kirk beat the Gorn most heinous. In the afterlife, they wind up in hell, so they totally have to whoop William Sadler, the Grim Reaper, in some righteous 90s games and win the right to come back to life. Knowing they need to beat their robot authors, robot 
evil robot us is holy cow that's a lot to say they detour to heaven and pull in stations the smartest aliens in history both alive and dead to build good robot others to fight the evil robot others they come back to life interrupt us is us is thank you josh they come back to life and interrupt their evil robot us is concert at the Battle of the Bands where good robot usses knock their blocks off, literally. Joss Ackland Denomalous shows up to out-timey-wimey them, but they out-timey-wimey his wimey-timey and give him a villain-defeating Melvin. It's when their manager, Pam Greer, Miss Woodrow, reveals themselves to be George Carlin Rufus. It seems they still suck at playing, eh, so they need to go through time to get good. They spend 13 years traveling time, get good, get married, win the competition, then unite the world in air guitars and rock and roll, and they all live happily ever after until it's revealed off camera that they were actually disqualified from the competition for going over time and thus caused Bill and Ted number three, the end. It was 16 months, and did they go to hell at all? Yeah, they went to hell. You know, when when they died, they went to hell. Yeah, I remember the, the hole they were falling down for a long time. I know, I don't think he pointed it out. I thought I said they went to hell. But yeah, they went to hell. Yeah, they went to hell for a bit. Uh, but yeah, so... You talk about going to hell then, or what they did in hell. I mean, that was awesome. I know, well... You, you got to see a cross-dressing Alex Winters. <laughs> Well, that's why people need to see this movie for themselves, Josh. They need to the experience Josh Winters in cross dressing and just all of that. So, America. You know, I thought, Dan, am I tired or does Tom keep flubbing his lines? Because he, I could swear he just said Josh Winters. He did, did I say and, and Josh Acklin and Alex? Winters. I thought you said Josh Winters. I'm confused no. now. I'm, As you should be. Well, then, mission accomplished. So, Nigel, what did you think of this film before we all get too confused? Well, I think you guys know while we were watching the film that... You um, absolutely it's... hated it. You felt it was the worst movie we've ever watched. And by worst, I mean <laughs> perfect. No. I mean, no, okay, this isn't the most perfect film ever. It might be, actually. God, this movie's fun. Oh, this movie's so much fun. I have not seen this movie in a long, long time. But honestly, with Bill and Ted, an excellent adventure fresh in my head. and yeah, yeah. It, uh, this I love this movie. I, I said it in my uh, initial thoughts, where I was like happy that this isn't the same exact plot as Excellent Adventure, which it isn't because there's only a little bit of time travel in the movie, whereas the first one was all about time travel. So I love that, but uh, I have to say, Mom, you're right. William Sadler as Death steals the damn show. He's got all the best lines. His facial expressions are amazing. That accent he uses, it just adds to the comedy. He steals every scene he's in with the guys. And, and that's, not, that's not to say Keanu and Alex are hilarious with amazing chemistry together as a comedy duo. I don't know, just their dialogue is awesome. The fact that they play the whole thing straight and it it's there's no winks and nods to the audience that, oh, this is just a joke and we're all in on it. No, no, they're just playing the whole thing straight. You know, like when they're introducing the band to the crowd at the end and they're like saying, oh, the Grim Reaper and this alien named Station and the good robot Uses," And the audience is just cheering. <laughs> like, they know who these people are. And this is not absurd on any level. I mean, I love it. It's just, I don't know. I can't say enough good about this film. This might be the so far on this journey, my favorite film that we've watched. And I love Hoosiers and Speed. But damn, I had fun watching this film. Tom. What about your final thoughts before I trample all over everyone else's thoughts? Oh, I've, I'm going to try not to trample too because I've got a lot of thoughts as well. I, I'm i glad that I like this film as well. I was so worried that it's going to suck. And like, no, it still holds up so well. And I think a lot of it has to do with the director. For this being his first film, and hang on, apologies for the clicks in the background, uh, listeners. I had to double check the name to make sure I was saying it right. Peter Hewitt. He did an amazing job on this. I mean, I camera work was spectacular. The way he controlled the scene brought, you know, they made you know tight close ups for when things needed to be tense, exaggerated work to really just drive home the 
like otherworldliness, like especially when they were in the afterlife is when they really just went intense low angles and just warp things up. It just lets you know that there's something wrong going on here. This is not natural at all. But when they were back in the real world, especially the present, things were a little more level, a little more eye level sort of directing, except when it needed to be different. And I think that was just well done. He was a great choice to direct this. And uh, I I'm going to make this one short since my fact section earlier on was a little longer than I meant it to be. So rather than gush too much, Josh, what about you? What are your initial uh, final thoughts? I, like said before, I've seen this movie very recently and I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed it tonight. And I love watching it with you guys And because, uh, I mean, I hate watching it with you guys because you point out all the small stuff and keep talking during the entire movie. It's like you're supposed to be saying stuff so you can record lines for some phantom podcast. <laughs> fourth wall, Josh. Fourth wall. <laughs> oh. We're getting meta here tonight. Whoa. Yeah, we are. This this whole episode has been a little meta. <laughs> a little bit. But uh, no, no, I love it. Um, it was hilarious. And it's sometimes it's one of those things, like having your, watched it so recently, I did notice a lot of smaller details in uh, the dialogue and some of the, uh, like, I don't think, I probably noticed it, but I'd forgotten I noticed it with all the happy 251st birthday to the princesses. Yeah. Like, I probably noticed that, but it's like when you guys pointed it out, it's like you saw the spanners in the background that said 251st and then the card and then all the other stuff. I didn't want to comment, uh, Tom, you said really good camera use, especially when they were in hell. Like, I thought that was really good. Like, remember you pointed out when they were in the uh, hallways, how they were intentionally made small? Mm -hmm. Well, they made the camera angle really low there, and it made it feel even more uncomfortable. And I remember the one scene with uh, the Colonel Oates guy. They did a really low angle shot of like zoom type thing or a dolly zoom, whatever you want to call it, leading up to them. And then like from him, it's like really high looking down. And then like when he shows up in the frame and they meet face to face, they're almost the same height. Mm -hmm. But it's like very disconcerting. I remember being uncomfortable with that scene as a kid. No, this it was very well done. Uh, Keanu Reeves, Alex Winter, and yes, uh, is it Jeff Sadler? Is they're awesome just absolutely awesome the only one downside i would say to this movie is there isn't as much uh george carlin yeah he only had what two scenes yeah like the very beginning and the very end he had like no bearing on the plot it was like S spock in that one episode of simpsons like he leaves at the end it's like my job here is done it's like but you didn't do anything didn't i did anybody get the uh, fire pit podcast uh, star trek reference square on their uh, their fire pit bingo yeah take a drink now <laughs> <laughs> be quiet josh well i'm just it's kind of redundant because they filled that square several several minutes ago. yeah it's yeah. almost a free space at this point yes mm -hmm. like if you if you play the bingo every episode star trek references it's got to be free space at this point one of the three of us is going to say it, if not all three in the night mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then there was the other square josh says something intentionally to piss off tom and dan yes but tom and dan don't notice it now in all fairness they didn't get to cover tom loses trivia square tonight so no, they didn't. They didn't. I, uh, yeah. I so no coverall today. Josh fails the podcast. They did get that one. Yeah. Josh is disappointing. Confirmed. Yeah. yeah but you pointed out that we pointed out things. You were pointing out some stuff too, Josh. Especially like the uh, the how the special effects not quite hold up like they used to back in the day. Yeah, well, uh, that was the best line. We were like, if you grew up back then, these special effects were okay. <laughs> like you don't say these were amazing back then. It's like these were okay. These were passable. <laughs> yes, yes. I pat myself on the back thinking about that. Good job, Josh. <laughs> Although I have noticed that we tend to talk more if it's a movie we've seen versus during a movie either one of us hasn't seen. Although I note this, joking aside, we were actually really quiet during this one. We had a few like quips here and there, but we might as well have been 10 years old sitting down and watching this. And really, I think it is a case of we're just appreciating the work done on it. The sets, the acting, the fact they all had fun doing it, especially death. Yeah. And the, the, the cast had really great chemistry in this movie. Like they re all really did play off each other. Well, except for maybe the girlfriends, but they didn't have very many scenes. So, and they were fine, but mm -mm. I mean, Keanu and, and, and then Alex winters are just, they were hilarious together. Mm -hmm. 
and death steals every scene he's in. I've said that a hundred times already. It, it just, it's awesome. It's just, I love the way the cast played off each other. Mm-hmm. And I do, I do regret there are, I do not. Well, yeah, I guess regret, but I'm, I'm, I'm sad that George Carlin's not in it as much. I, and I couldn't find any reason why he's only basically a cameo in this film. So yeah, I guess if we're going to quibble, the story would be the weakest part. I love that it's original, but it's mostly they're just wandering through the film. Not a lot really happens in terms of plot progression. Like they build the robots and then they defeat their evil selves. That took all of what? Not even 10 minutes. Yeah. Apparently there was an original and there was a different ending planned in the movie where uh, when they got to the concert, their evil robot us's were going to kill them multiple times during the concert. And they were going to keep using the loophole that they beat death in like seven, eight, nine, ten games to keep coming back to life. Oh, nice. You know, and instead they they scrapped that ending and rewrote the multiple, the, like the whole, well, if I time travel, I'm going to make a cage and this and that and I'll have a gun and a key. And like they rewrote <laughs> it to that. But I guess the comic book adaptation of this film has that original ending where the, the robot us is keep killing them. And they keep coming back to life because they beat death in so many games while they were in, in the afterlife. So, uh. um, and actually I kind of wish they would have gone with that one. Cause I think that was, a little, that would have been a little funnier, Sure, but I think in terms of keeping to run time, I can see why they scrapped. It. Yeah. Well, this movie was an hour and a half. I don't think they were worried about run time. Oh no. And so it doesn't go too much longer. Cause you know, who can sit through a two hour long film, Josh? We're dealing with guess in the early 90s. Yeah, because I remember Jurassic Park came out in 94 and people were like, oh, my God, this is such a long film at two hours. The MTV generation, Josh, they just can't sit still long enough. That's called irony. Young people are always (laughs) too young to sit around. Uh, But no, I I love this film. This was good. I'm glad this was one of our, our one of our picks, guys. Good choice. You're welcome. And this is where Dan goes. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome, Dan. You make you pick such good movies. I know. Boy, a lot of ego stroking going on here now. A little more ego stroking. Let me tell you, I love this movie. I've I'm had my saying. pants off since we started talking about porn. <laughs> Wait, that was at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah, and me too. Well, that's it for tonight's <laughs> show, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I've hit all my notes, guys. I mean, I've, yeah, I think we're just going in circles talking about how much we love the ca- the sets, the camera work, death, the acting, all that other stuff. So it's a good movie. Go watch it there. <laughs> well, I, I would say that that does it for tonight's show. But as always, as a reminder, you can find us on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, or wherever podcasts are given freely at your discretion. Be sure to like and subscribe as it really does help out the channel. So, so help a podcast out and uh, click that like button. And be sure to join us on Discord and have some fun interacting with us there, you know, talking amongst some of our fledgling fans, where you can suggest movie paths, give us some feedback, and just in general, have a good time chatting. You could also like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And if you want to reach out to us old school style, you can always email us, uh, mentioned back in the interspersal. Um, if you want to talk sponsorship, feedback, submissions, whatever, you know, we, we're not going to read it. Um, <laughs> but seriously, uh, if you'd like to reach out to us that way, uh, the links to the email, all social media is in the episode's description at firepit.podbean.com. And I would like to give a special shout out to Sync Lounge. Yeah, Sync Lounge and uh, Plex and our new uh, platform, Zencaster. And uh, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it. I'm going to give a shout out to my uh, two best friends, Tom and Dan. Oh, oh, I just figured, you know, they are my best friends. I might as well give them a shout out. He shouted us out, Dan. Oh, my God. I know. They're going to be so lucky when they hear it. No, they're all I've got. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't envy me. <laughs> Instead, envy Amanda, who is the latest joining to the Fire Pit Facebook page. Last name um, omitted because... That's how I do it. Thank you for popping in. Also, thank you, Patsy, for joining as well. It's appreciated to have you sitting by the fire pit and to everyone else out there whose names I have yet to get to, but will. Thank you for, you know, helping to keep the fire pit burning. And I'll give a special shout out, as always, to Peggy, OG friend of the channel. 
And uh, another shout out to uh, our new listeners uh, and our old listeners. Just always appreciate it, especially the new work guys joining us. Uh, Travis, I said I'd give you a special shout out tonight since you started listening to the podcast this week. So thank you very much. And we do appreciate it. I hope you're enjoying it. So that was fun. Uh, where's the next stop on the parade there, Josh? Well, Dan, now that we've evaded death, it's off to the airport to thwart yet another terrorist attack. And we will be following one William Sadler to Die Hard 2. Die Harder. I'm serious. That's the name of the movie. But mm. he will be administering death and not playing death this time around. Delicious. Only the sixth worst Christmas movie of all time and only slightly less than a month late. Looking forward to it. Until then, I've been Josh. I've been Tom. And I've been Dan. Thanks for listening. This has been a production of Curtain Call Entertainment, LLC. Good luck out there. And... Done! Guys, script is finished. It's done. Thank God. Guys, I finished... The script. Oh, thank God. We got to start in like 20 minutes, guys. So, so what? We going to go give it to past us now? now? Fuck those guys. Why don't we just give them the script that future us's gave us earlier? That shitty one, three lines. I'm liking this idea. Nigel, put down your scalding hot coffee and hurry over here. Okay, hold up. <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh my God, that's really fucking hot. <laughs> it burns my throat. Dad, I've got the first aid kit. I'm coming. Josh, watch out for the coffee spill. <laughs> ah, ah, oh shit! So oh, watch out for the oh, thing. My eye! What did you do to my eye? The first aid kit hit me in the goddamn eye. Oh, for fuck's sake, that's gonna bruise. Oh shit, that fucking hurt. There's so much blood. Oh shit. <sighs> so anywho, guys, I think this is the part where we got to go back in time. Wait. Oh, oh, all the way in. Ah, But who wrote the not script? And where's the magic elevator? <coughs> I don't I don't think we're, we should overthink it. Let's just use that one. That makes sense. Yeah, 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 see, yeah, see, see? Why don't I get a fun voice like you guys? You know what? I'm going to go fuck with my past self. Make him think something's wrong with my mom. <laughs> Dumbass. Yeah.